There will be a major earthquake in Utah. It might happen during our lives, it might happen during the lives of our children, maybe our grandchildren, but it is going to happen. And when it happens, we're going to look back and we're going to ask ourselves, why didn't we do more to prepare? My name is Brady Cox. I'm a professor in the Civil and Environmental Engineering Department at Utah State University. I was born and raised in Helper, Utah. My father was a coal miner. There were seismic events underground that were caused by mining, and there were times in our community where coal miners were actually killed by those types of events. I joined Utah State University after I finished high school and uh, started an undergraduate degree in civil engineering. My senior year, there was a big earthquake in Turkey. And my professor at the time ended up getting a research grant to go to Turkey and study this earthquake. And he needed someone to work on a master's degree to help him with that research project. I didn't plan on doing it. It was just something that kind of happened. I was just shocked by what I saw. The impact that it had on people's lives, it became real to me. And that really was the primary factor, I would say, that led to me pursuing a PhD. I wanted to try and make an impact as an engineer and help people not to feel that loss. Coming back to Utah after being gone for about 20 years, it's been interesting to wander around Logan, to wander around the streets of my hometown, Helper. Utah's booming in terms of its growth. People are building in places that we didn't build 20 years ago. We're spreading up into the mountains and out into the valleys, and we have to make sure that as we're growing, that we're doing a good job about preparing all of our new construction to make sure that it's resistant to earthquakes. Earthquakes occur when pieces of the ground move relative to one another. When the earth slips, it creates seismic waves. Those waves come out of the bedrock and up into the soil, and they will resonate the soil just like when you pluck a guitar string. When you play a guitar or a violin, you pluck the string and it plays a note. And that note changes based on the different strings. They have different diameters or thicknesses. And the thickness of the soil, whether it's sand or gravel or clay, will have a profound effect on the note that that ground resonates at. And so we have to be able to predict that as earthquake engineers. Predicting resonance in the ground is really critical for earthquake engineering in Utah because we have these massive valleys where we have mountains on both sides of the valley and then they're filled with this soft clay. Because the ground will vary so much in terms of how it's going to resonate, you have to think a lot about how you design different buildings in different locations in the valley to make sure that the seismic forces that are imparted by the earthquake won't resonate something that would cause an effect that you wouldn't anticipate. While we have a strong history of understanding the seismology aspects of earthquakes in Utah, we need to put more emphasis into the engineering aspects of earthquakes. We want to be able to put sensors all over the ground surface and be able to then retrieve an image of the subsurface along with the engineering properties. Early in my career at the University of Arkansas, I was selected for an award from the President of the United States for my work on this subsurface imaging. And we've improved subsurface imaging greatly since then, and I'm really excited about applying these new imaging methods to Utah. Utah is really the most seismically hazardous state that doesn't have a dedicated earthquake engineering center, a center to study the engineering side of earthquakes and how to design and strengthen our infrastructure and lifelines to resist earthquake shaking. Investing a little bit up front makes a big difference in preventing significant losses when the earthquake happens. Natural hazards don't have to create natural disasters. And 
our abilities as a society to engineer and build our civil infrastructure have a huge impact on breaking that chain between a natural hazard and a natural disaster.